Now we'll see a straightforward method for determining whether a vector field is conservative. In what follows, we'll assume that our vector field is a two-dimensional vector field, and P and Q, the uh, components of our vector field, have continuous first-order partial derivatives on the domain that we're interested in. So the first theorem, theorem 5, says that if F is conservative, then the partial of P with respect to Y is equal to the partial of Q with respect to X. Why would this be the case? Well, if F is conservative, what that means is that F is equal to some F sub X, F sub Y for some scalar function f. But then that means that this is p and this is q. So p is equal to the x partial of the potential function, q is equal to the y partial of the potential function. Therefore, what we get is that del p del y or dp dy is equal to the y derivative of f sub x and dq dx is equal to the x derivative of q. So that's the x derivative of f sub y. And by equality of mixed partials, f sub xy is equal to f sub yx. So dp dy is equal to fxy, which is equal to fyx, which is equal to dq dx. So it's really just following from the equality of mixed partials that we get this result, because p and q are already partial derivatives, and all we're doing is taking their derivative with respect to the other variable. So dp dy and dq dx are both second order partial derivatives, and they are just in reverse order, fxy versus fyx, which are equal. So that means if f is conservative, then we know that the partial derivatives of its components must satisfy this equation. Conversely, if the partial derivatives of its components satisfy these equations, that's not enough to guarantee that the vector field is conservative. However, it is in the case we are on an open and simply connected domain. So if d is open and simply connected and dp dy is equal to dq dx throughout d, then f is conservative. So we aren't going to prove this here. This is delayed until 16.4 where we use Green's theorem and theorem 4 from just the previous page to get this result. But it is a very nice result because it tells us if I have a vector field and I want to know, is it conservative? Well, if I'm on an open and simply connected domain, I just need to take the derivative of its first component with respect to y, see if I get the same thing as taking its derivative of the second component with respect to x. So let's see an example of how we can use this result. Here's a vector field f. We want to know is this vector field conservative? So what we will do is, you know, we call the first part of it P, the second component Q. And so we're wanting to check, is it conservative? Well, by theorem six above, we just have to look at dP dy. And when I take the derivative with respect to y, I get two x and derivative of cos y is negative sine y minus cos x. I also need to compute the derivative of q with respect to x. That is negative 2x sine y minus cos x. Those two are equal to each other. So these are equal. So that's a good start. Theorem 6 says we also have to be on an open and simply connected domain. Our domain in this case is 
It's not specified, so we take it to be as big as possible. So it's all of R2. There's no problem with evaluating the, the vector field at any point in R2. And that is open and simply connected. And so that means that by theorem 6, we have that our vector field is conservative. So that's an existence result. It says there exists a potential function for this vector field. Now we've got to go ahead and find it. So how do we go ahead and find this? So we want to find the potential function little f. We're going to use partial integration to do this. We know that this function little f we're looking for, when we take its x partial derivative, we're going to get the function p. So that would be 2x cos y minus y cos x. And so what we'll do is we will integrate or find the antiderivative of this thing with respect to x. So when I do that, the antiderivative would be x squared cos y minus y sine x plus constant of integration. But here, the constant of integration could be any function of y, so we'll call it g of y. So where g of y is just some constant relative to the x variable, and so that means it can be a function of y. So that's our candidate for our potential function f. When we differentiate with respect to y, we should get, so this is f sub y, we should get that function q, or the second component of our vector field. So let's first differentiate this with respect to y. I get negative x squared sine y minus sine x plus g prime of y. And this is supposed to equal q. And q is negative x squared sine y minus sine x. And when I compare these expressions, I get that the two terms match up, and this thing should be 0 then. So it means that that g prime of y has got to be 0 for those to be equal. And so since g prime of y is 0, that tells us that g of y is some constant. Not only is it independent of x, it's actually independent of y as well, so it's a constant. So what we get is, therefore, our function, our potential function, g of x, y, is x squared cos y minus y sine x plus a constant k. And this function has the property that when I take its gradient, I get the vector field up above. And I can maybe I'll minimize it just a bit so we can see them both fit on the screen. And we can go ahead and you just double check. What we've done is we've we found a function we think is the potential function for our vector field f, big F. So we just take its derivative, differentiate with respect to x, see if we get the function p, differentiate with respect to y, see if we get the function q. And we do in this case. So we not only have a check for whether a vector field is conservative or not. We also have a method now, this partial integration method, for determining the potential function. So that's it for this particular part on how to determine whether a vector field is conservative or not. In the last video, we'll do a couple of examples where we use the results we've now developed. So we'll see you in the next video.